Hey guys, today we are going to take a look in on the lasagna bin. It's been about three weeks since we looked in here. If you are new to this bin, it is a 10 gallon or 38 liter container that can has about one pound or about a half a kilo of my Red Wiggler Blue Worm European Nightcrawler mix. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today as I work through the lasagna bin is the fact that my mixed species bins tend to go a lot faster, a lot better. And in my more recent research, I think I figured out why. So stick around to the end if you want to hear the whole story of what I have found out. All right, so we're going to look in here today. The last time that we fed, we put new noodle on this side, new noodle on this side, and then we also fed pretty heavily. And I'll put a picture below of what that looked like. Okay, well it is getting a little bit cooler here in my basement. We are down to 69 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and 47% uh, relative humidity. But this bin has a mix of red wigglers, blue worms, and European nightcrawlers. And one of the things that's good about having a mix of worms is that they kind of pick up each other's slack. So when you have really hot weather, you've got uh, your blue worms, which are not going to skip a beat. Uh, they actually prefer it to be quite a bit warmer than what your red wigglers and your European nightcrawlers do. And then when it gets to be winter time, like it is right now, then what is going to happen is your red wigglers and your European nightcrawlers are going to pick up the slack from the blue worms. And they all, you know, they live, my basement doesn't get real, real cold. That must have been a piece of non-compostable tape there. My basement doesn't get real, real cold, but it does get down to about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the, the Celsius below. But uh, it's uncomfortable for me, so you have to think that the, um, the blue worms will probably be unhappy. And for anybody who's wondering, this is what Amazon tape, the black Amazon tape, looks like when it is in progress. You get those little strings, and then the paper part slowly goes away. So I'm looking through here and I'm not seeing any evidence that the, uh, the piece of cardboard, other than the tape, is left at all. There's a little, I guess there is, they're just a little bit right there. So we're gonna continue on digging here and even though the temperatures have been going down, uh, these worms aren't slowing down yet. So now red wigglers do a really, you know, and European nightcrawlers both, do a really good job down to almost freezing temperatures. Oop, worm ball. Good worms. It looks like we must have fed onions here. So there's your forbidden food of the day example of how worms actually do like onions. Still smells pretty oniony. Got some tomato skins here. Looks like they're trying to grow that onion. So, you know, it's just a matter of slow food versus fast food. Once they put the picture of what they were fed last time, we might find that on this side, there was a little bit faster food than on this side, which is where the, the slower food is. All right, so I'm just kind of gathering things up so that we can put it in the feeding zone today. Uh, but we're not seeing a lot of evidence. You know, just a little bit of that cardboard is left. So we're gonna take our top layer and uh, make that into a noodle for them. It's kind of been pre-digested by being on the top for a while. So there we go, we're collecting things up. If anybody's uh, been watching the playlist, which is linked in the description below if you wanna go back to the beginning and see it from the beginning. Uh, these are from the uh, worm tea bags that I used and those are linked in the Amazon store below as well. They are completely compostable. I think it's probably been about four months. The bag is totally gone. It's just the drawstring, the cotton drawstring that's left now. I also, you know, sometimes use the nylon bags because they're reusable. Uh, those cotton ones are not. They are once and done. And uh, yeah, I didn't even know they were that compostable. I had left them out thinking I would make another batch of tea and uh, <laughs> nope. About 24 hours and a wet uh, muslin bag is done for. All right, I don't think this is the normal black Amazon tape. I'm gonna take that out. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about the mixed species being better is that they have overlapping temperatures, which we've talked about before, but they also have overlapping pH. 
want to follow along with my worm farms, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, so as we're moving, the pH uh, that regular um, temperate worms are comfortable in is, you know, anywhere from almost freezing to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a brand new cocoon here. And, but the blue worms actually, you know, their temperature range, they're comfortable up into, you know, like 90 degrees Fahrenheit. But the pH is the other thing that I found in my research. I've been reading a lot of uh, earthworm physiology books, is that the tropical worms are actually able to deal with a more acidic pH than the red wigglers and the European night crawlers. Okay, put a piece of cardboard down here and get them some food. Now, the tropical worms, according to the book, which includes, at least for things that I have access to, includes the blue worms and the African night crawlers. They were talking about how they're capable of not just tolerating, but thriving in pHs that are like five, which it's a logarithmic scale. So it's not like temperature where a little bit is a little bit, it's times 10. Um, so it's pretty amazing. And it might also be another reason why the, my bins with the mixed species um, are doing so well. Because they, uh, you know, the, the one kind of worm, the, you know, the regular red wigglers and such, you know, they probably stay away from food that, okay, big, <laughs> big piece of Amazon tape there. Um, they stay away from things that are kind of acidic, but yet the blue worms might not be fussed about it. So, I mean, that's, it's always, a, as I continue to learn on and on about different things, the more I realize why the, the mixed bins are really the best of all worlds. You know, they're, they're good about different temperatures and they're also good, now I've learned, pHs. So that is very interesting. Let me know in the comments below, had you heard that thing about uh, tropical worms having a, a wider pH range? That was news to me. All right, let's get these guys some more cardboard over on this side. So this, breed, this experiment here with the lasagna bin started out as kind of a breeding experiment that didn't exactly, you know, wasn't that great of a breeding experiment. I thought that they would like to be inside the flutes, like here. Um, and I just kept doing it because it's a really easy bin. It's a kind of a time saver. I'm not shredding all the cardboard. I'm just layering it in there with the food. just layer that up and somebody had asked you know do you find that these the bin that I don't you know shred everything do you get more pest um, you may have seen a fly go by sometimes uh, when you know when I'm coming and going out of the wormery and the door is open things do get in here but the basement in my case I'm lucky this basement is only used for the wormery I don't have any storage for my household or anything like that. So if there's a few flies here and there, the traps will catch them and I'm not super worried. But if you were gonna have a bin like this, you might wanna put some kind of a net over it. All right, uh, like I said, I will link the playlist for this bin over here. And also, if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.